I outlined a strategy that you can use to get help that you need as a caregiver in my last video, but we didn't get a chance to implement the strategy and show you how to use it. Here we explore the pathway and using the strategy to get the help you need now. If you haven't watched my last video yet, you might want to do that first. It's short and it's sweet, and it gives you the basic tool that we're going to use to implement to get help that you need now as a caregiver. If that isn't available to you right now, here are the basic concepts so you can keep watching, and then to implement them, you can go back and watch that video. It helps you identify the things that you might need as a caregiver for someone with dementia, because normally they're swirling around in your head and you don't have a usable list. I even provide a cheat sheet to be able to do this so that you don't have to go through all the work, you can check boxes. We then use a system to prioritize the most useful help that you could get as a caregiver and help you identify the top three choices. Now here's the magic of using your information and where you get a choice of how to implement it. I'm advocating for path B, but you can only lead horses to water, they get to choose what to do with it. So here's path A. Keep your list near and dear. And whenever you get the inevitable question, as you talk to friends or family or your spiritual community or anyone that you're talking to and they say, Oh goodness, that sounds so hard. Is there anything I can do to help? You whip out your list and say, well, yes, actually there is. I've been wishing desperately for, and then you pull out the number one thing on your list. Would you be willing to sign up for that on an ongoing basis? If thing number one isn't up their alley, try thing number two or number three. Chances are someone will say yes to those things that would be so helpful for you. The problem with path A is that you're in passive mode. You're waiting for somebody to ask. What if it takes days or weeks for this to happen? What if all the people who were going to ask already did and you didn't have anything to tell them when it happened? That's why I'm advocating for path B. Path B is where you list all the people who have ever asked if you needed help, offered some type of help, or have just empathized with you and seemed like they really cared. You then pick the top three people on your list and actively go and find and ask them if they would be able to help with one of your top three identified struggles. The conversation might go something like, Hey Jan, it is so nice to get to talk to you. Do you remember when we had that conversation about me caregiving for my mom and you asked if there was anything that you could do to help? Well, I couldn't think of anything that day, but now I have. Would you be willing to fill in the blank with one of your top three things on an ongoing basis? Is there any way that could work for you? Again, if the thing you picked first doesn't work for this person, feel free to ask for anything on your list. When someone says yes, as they will, it's important to emphasize that it's so helpful they're willing to do this task more than once. No, they're not signing up for a lifetime of picking up your prescriptions at the store, but they are willing to do something on a recurrent basis for a while, which is really going to help your stress level. They need to know that. One specific area where people often don't know how to ask for help is in the realm of visits and socialization for their loved one with dementia. The scenario often goes something like this. Mom, we'll call her June, was a widower, so your father has passed away, but mom has stayed pretty active. She has several friends, she's in a book club, she has a church group, and so she meets with people regularly and things are going well. She develops memory problems, and so she doesn't really go to her group activities as much anymore, but she still keeps in touch with some of her friends. And then she gets a diagnosis of dementia. And the friends still try to interact with her. They invite her out every once in a while, but she has a hard time remembering and following through. And so eventually those invitations kind of go away as well. Suddenly mom is alone a lot and dependent on you for all of her socialization needs. You aren't enough. With today's method, we would prioritize mom's socialization and visits and activities as one of your top recurrent needs. 
when people ask if they can help, you excitedly say that a visit with mom or doing something with mom would be one of the most wonderful things that could happen for her. And you ask, is there any way that you would be able to do this? And you fill in a time frame. Once a month is usually a good baseline or place to start. You suggest a few things they could do, like having coffee, going for a short walk, or going to a movie. Anything that you think your mom might like and would be easy for this person to do with her. You suggest that it's easiest to keep it regularly scheduled so that June can look forward to it. Something like every first Monday of the month in the afternoon. Of course, you let them think through the details of what and when and how. But by providing this much structure, it makes people feel much more comfortable and feel like it's doable. That's something within their abilities. The work has already been done for them and it's easier for them to say yes. So now you know how to implement this strategy for getting help as a caregiver for your loved one with dementia. And it might be really helpful to know about more resources as a caregiver. Watch this video for resources and other things that could lower your stress. I'll see you there.